Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today's video will be all about our first fully functional testing for BattleBots Season 5 version of Bloodsport. Looks like a half inch thick glass. Vacuum tube. Left of it. Yeah, too bad. I think we killed that first for you guys. Yeah. Good job. First things first. It cannot be overstated that safety is the number one priority when doing anything of this sort. We found a totally abandoned parking lot where there was a dumpster on one side and a large embankment on the other, preventing debris from getting anywhere. Before any destructive tests, we first assembled the bot and did our first spin-ups without even activating the drive system. We went back here behind that gate that I pointed out earlier into this grassy area where there was a hill on the one side and a bunch of abandoned forest on the other, and we assembled the weapon system using this gigantic chunky nut to hold on the weapon. For all of these tests that you will see coming up, we first started out at about 40% speed, then 60, then 80, and ultimately 100% speed. And these tests were performed with all four weapon motors running, but with a 60 amp current limit through the speed controllers. In the battle box, we'll be running a 120 amp current limit, so it should be able to spin up much faster than this. And on top of that, we are intentionally spinning up slowly, so this in no way represents the absolute best spin up time that we can get. I should also mention that during these spin-ups, we are on the other side of that embankment back in the parking lot and nowhere near the robot. I just left my camera running on a tripod. You can see this frame synchronization with the camera makes it look like the blade is standing still when in fact it's spinning quite quickly. The exact RPM though, we can't really know for sure. Only that it subdivides into the 60 FPS that the camera was running at. After we felt safe spinning up the robot alone, we decided to try and activate the drive system as well. However, here's where we ran into a problem. The custom boards that Justin had designed to manage the receivers had a slight flaw that he needed to fix by soldering over where there used to be a resistor, and ultimately he was only able to get one of the boards really working properly. These tests are done for this reason, to find out that something like this is going wrong now instead of happening in the battle box. Ultimately, with the fix he was able to put in place at the moment, we were only able to get both sides of drive and two of the four weapon motors running. So keep in mind that for all of the destructive tests you'll see later on in this video, we're running at one quarter weapon power. Our first test of the day was this Xfinity cable box that I found lying in the trash room of my apartment. You can see how the blade left a really nice tooth imprint on part of the casing and also launched some of the heat stinks many, many, many dozens of feet away. Next up, we have an old 22 inch LCD computer monitor that I picked up for $5 at a Savers.
was especially impressed on this one by how effed up the stand got. I mean, it turned the bottom metal plate of that thing into a potato ship. You can also see in this resulting pile of rubble how many different layers make up the LCD. And we used that white diffraction grating as our bite force sign that you saw at the start of the video. Next up, an Xfinity router modem combo that I found alongside the cable box. As you can see, the blade slows down essentially not at all from hitting this incredibly light object and tossing it at probably over 100 miles an hour into the dumpster. Alright, time for what you all really wanted to see in ultra slow motion. As you can see, the steel bezel of this monitor was tossed backwards as it was torn asunder, but thankfully we were safe on top of that embankment that I showed earlier. Next up, something a little tougher, this Harbor Freight air compressor that we found handily in the dumpster once we got here. This might not seem very impressive at first, but just imagine how far you could throw this thing, which weighs nearly 20 pounds, compared to how far Bloodsport threw it. Real glad I wasn't standing where that dumpster was. Unfortunately, this plastic didn't explode like we were expecting, but we still had the blade cut straight through it. It just happened to spring back. I hope you enjoyed watching these tests. It was a lot of fun hanging out with Justin and Rosa for the day, although it took a lot longer than expected given the radio issues we were having. Ultimately, we found the weapon system held up perfectly with no worrying instability issues using this brand new weapon design. This definitely won't be the last video I make of BattleBots testing, so subscribe and stay tuned for more. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching!